Hey guys, welcome back squad members. Now, one of the topics that a lot of guys were interested in is um, land nav. Now, <laughs> land nav is a pretty broad topic and it takes a lot of work. Um, so, I'm going to broad stroke it now and if we want to return to this, we'll add in snippets and more pieces as time goes. Uh, but I'm just going to broad brush it right now. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the difference between land navigation and orienteering. Because I think that or orienteering is a really good skill to have. And it's a, uh, it's a deteriorating skill. And it requires a lot of work and practice. But the fundamentals re you know, remain the same. And as long as we've got the fundamentals down, <clears throat> you can find your way from point A to point B in, let's say, a, a very uh, a rural type environment. Um, so what you need here is a, a compass, a, a topographical map. <clears throat> so, and these are like works of art, man. I tell you, they're, 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 they're frame worthy, a good topographical map. When it comes to topographical maps, uh, I think a good site to go is mytopo.com, something like that. I could add that web link on this uh, block of instruction here. And then when we talk maps, we want it, in my opinion, you want a, a large scale map versus a small scale map. So the difference being a large, uh, small scale map, let's say one over 500 thousands, where a large scale map, this one is one over 24 thousand. What that means is one inch on this map represents 24 thousand inches on the ground. So a lot uh, easier to nav by if you're using a large scale map. Uh, you have to understand marginal data and the legend, a little bit of that, but it's pretty intuitive. I mean, you've got your uh, declination diagram, scale, adjoining maps, and stuff like that, map sheet, quadrangle, name, and all that stuff. Uh, and then the contour interval is real important, too. Contour interval. And this one says contour interval is 40 feet. So you see how close together these contour lines are? That means there's 40 feet between one contour line and the next. <clears throat> uh, a lot to cover here on, on map reading, but I think you'll get a good gist of it from this class right here. Let me fold this up the way a map is supposed to be folded. Boom. Like that right there. <clears throat> get rid of that. Now with the compass, in land nav, you want to take a heading. For instance, 265 degrees and stay on that heading. Orienteering, all you need is a cone of direction. So you need a cone of direction. For instance, generally northwest. Cone of direction, generally northwest. And then you want to select a route. Now, in addition to selecting that route, an important thing to understand is distance. How far do I have to go? How far have I gone? So a couple different ways to measure distance. One is a pace count. And to get a pace count, you need to find a measured out uh, 100 meter uh, length of earth and you walk that hundred meter length of earth and figure out how many paces it took you to get from point A to point B that hundred meters and it's best to do it on every other foot for instance your left foot one two three four etc now me personally I like time speed and distance I like to use this to determine how far I've gone time speed and distance you need a, a predetermined chunk of earth that you know is for instance 1,000 meters, 1,000 meters long, and you walk that, you walk that and you time it, and for a guy, you know, reasonably fit, carrying a light load, hoofing it pretty good, it's about 10 minutes-ish, you know, on flat terrain, open terrain. Now, time, speed, and distance changes if you're in a wooded area. Now, you're talking maybe 15 minutes. Now, if there's terrain, your time, speed, and distance for 1,000 might be 20 minutes. But it's good to figure that out and determine what your time, speed, and distance is through varying terrain. Because then you could just use your watch. But you have to remember to look at your watch, though, before you start and at checkpoints, etc. <clears throat> now, like I said, the difference between orienteering and land navigation. Land navigation, if I need to go from uh, point A to point B, I'm going to just shoot a heading and I'm going to dead reckon. Boom. I'm going to stay on that heading. You know, the whole way. I'm just going to stay on my compass and stay on that heading. <sighs> the problem there is that that might not be the best recourse. Because 
you're walking over very terrain and it may be uh, it may be shorter as the crow flies but a lot more difficult when it comes down to it so you with orienteering you want to select a route so for instance my little not to scale map here I drew out some grid lines so each one of these grid lines represents 1,000 meters regardless of what the scale of the map is whether it's one over 500 five one over 500 thousands or one over 24 thousands uh, a grid square is a grid square just that on a small scale map they're a lot smaller on a large scale map they're a lot bigger um, you don't even need a protractor you don't even need a protractor to do orienteering so all right orienteering my vehicle broke down there or this is the location of my vehicle on that road I need to move to this fire tower or whatever it is so I want to select a route now some of how we select a route might be de may be determined by your geographical location for instance uh, the uh, the hills in uh, Pennsylvania uh, West Virginia North Carolina Smokies and those draws and creek bottoms that stuff is rough and we don't want to get caught in that stuff at all you know on other uh, geographical locations maybe like the southwest those creek bottoms aren't as uh, they're not filled with as many brambles and rocks and um, uh, mountain laurel and all those kind of tangly things. So you could get away with walking in those in those ruts. But in somewhere like I live, North Carolina, I want to stay out of that crap. And then if I take a look at the map and I see that there's a hilltop, a hilltop, and there's a draw right here, and those grid lines are super close together, that means cliff. And if this is 40 feet contour interval, I am going straight down and straight up. And that is going to be a major, major ass wound. So I want to stay out of that stuff. It's important also to know terrain features. And you could look those up on the interwebs, right? Look up topographical uh, terrain features. Because it's important to know whether, what a uh, hilltop is, a saddle, draw, depression, all those things. So I drew up very, very basic terrain features here on this one i've got a hilltop a hilltop one road down here improved road because unimproved road looks different on a topographical map than an improved road and i'm going to select a route so i'm, I'm going to check my distance so i'm going to count out or measure out by grid square how far it is from here to there and it's roughly one two three four five let's say six k thereabouts so before i take off I need to make sure that I check my watch because I know how long it's going to take me. Now I'm going to select a route that takes me uh, around this hilltop. I'm not going to go straight up and straight down if I don't have to. I'm going to use this hilltop as a uh, as a handrail on my left, and the low ground is a handrail on my right. And I'm going to use this saddle right here as a checkpoint. So <clears throat> I'm going to take off, get my time hack, start, and I'm going to start walking. Now, the danger of traversing is when you traverse, you tend to slip downhill. So you have to pay attention to that when you're traversing. So I know that my general cone of direction here, because this would be north, is uh, east by north, uh, I'm sorry, west by northwest. So I'm going to walk west initially and then start northwest until I hit this big chunk right here. I'm going to check my time to see if I'm roughly at 1, 2, 3K something like that so uh, that's probably about 45 minutes in this terrain about 15 minutes per kilometer once I'm here I'm gonna uh, do the same thing where um, I uh, do a time hack and I'm not gonna go straight up I'm not gonna go straight up this I'm gonna use this uh, spur right here because this is low ground low ground low ground and it go, comes up like this I'm gonna use a spur as an attack point so once I get to the spur and I have low ground on my left, right, and back, and nothing but high ground in front of me, that's going to be my attack point, and my cone of direction is going to change. My cone of direction now, northeast, roughly one kilometer, boom, time hack, boogie on up that until I hit the apex of this hilltop, now I have low ground on all sides. So real broad brush, uh, kind of explanation of orienteering if we like this we could get into it a lot more anyway thanks for being here and paying attention rock and roll